my God, I don't, you guys can't know what this feels like. But right now I'm standing in Otsuka, which is one station over after Ikebukuro station where I'm staying. And this place, Otsuka, is the station, the place where Sam and I landed the very first time we came to Japan and came to Tokyo. The very first place that we actually got off the train from the airport was Otsuka. And basically this street that I'm walking on right now is the very first street that I actually got to walk on in Japan. And all those feelings that I've got the first time are coming back to me. And this feels very, very, very nostalgic. Otsuka is such a great area because it's not touristy at all. No one really knows about this area. There's not much to do here, so no one comes to visit and explore. So it's very residential. You have a tram that goes up and down that street here, which is very typical of, uh, of Otsuka. And yeah, it's residential, but you get a lot of little, little restaurants and stuff like that. And then when you walk on the other side of the main road, you get into like little houses and mostly like schools and family homes and stuff like that. So that's the vibe you get here. Anyways, this is where I decided to start my day because I wanted to come back to Otsuka and to see how it changed from last year to this year. And honestly, it hasn't changed at all. I can see a bunch of different little spots that I actually took pictures of the very first time I was here. Today's plan is to walk through Tokyo because, oh yeah, I haven't mentioned this, but today, today is my last day. So that's very, um, it's actually very sad. Today is not a happy day, but I'm gonna try and keep the video still upbeat. Um, but it's my last day in Tokyo. I'm leaving tomorrow morning, so today I want to do something special. I want to explore the city one last time before I have to leave. So we're starting in Otsuka, and I'm going to be walking for three-something hours to the neighborhood of Kagurazaka, where I'm also nostalgic about a cup of coffee I've got last year. A cute old man that owns like a little coffee shop. We went there to have coffee once, and he did a pour-over for me, and that was delicious, and I said to myself, Whenever I'm in Tokyo, I'm coming back here for coffee, which I haven't done yet. So that's the plan. Start in Otsuka and in Kagurazaka and go have my coffee at Tomboro Coffee. If it's still there, I really hope so. All right, this is the plan for the day. Let's go explore. And I also got myself what is arguably gonna be my last melon pond at the bakery right by the train station. I'll miss those because we can't find melon pot in France, really. Mm. Oh my God. It's from a bakery, so I would expect it to be better than 7-Eleven and Family Mart. And it really is. For those of you who don't know melon pot, when you come to Japan, you have to try this. This is a pretty staple in, in Japanese cuisine, right? See, like I said, once you get off the main road, most of Otsuka is really just residential and little houses and or very, very low rises with apartments, but mostly, mostly like old houses like this. And then you have a school right here. So it's very, very family oriented, residential, quiet area. And yeah, you're one station away from Ikebukuro, which is the third biggest station in the whole world. And you have the red light districts and all of that, like nightlife, right there. I would highly recommend anyone that comes to Tokyo, if they need to figure out where to stay, forget about Shinjuku and forget about Kabukicho and all the places where everyone is going and staying. With, with the Yamanote line, which goes around in circle in Tokyo, you can literally get to every single hot spot in Tokyo with one train. So you can stay a little bit outside of the beaten path and try and see some something more Tokyo, you know, like Otsuka. I highly recommend that.
is my car. This is a French make Peugeot, and you never see any French cars anywhere else but in France. And in some places in Europe, but really not anywhere else. But this is my exact car, and this is kind of crazy to see that in Japan. So on the way to Kagorozaka, from Otsuka, there was a temple called Gokokuji Temple, I think. And it was kind of like on the way, so I thought maybe if it's a detour, I'll do a little detour just so I can see that temple, which is probably um, small and you know way off the beaten path and it's not something you see on any tourist guides uh, but that's the beauty about about Japan and about a city like Tokyo is you can explore any sort of neighborhood and and then see temples and shrines that are kind of like tucked in a little bit everywhere and people that don't know about it so it's uh, kind of like one of the beauties of exploring a city or a part of town that's not known. Look at that tree right behind me. It's half red, half yellow leaves. Man, hot in Japan. I've talked about that extensively in almost every single one of my videos, but beautiful, beautiful season to come to Japan. Another thing that I have been wondering over the time that I've been here in Tokyo is those trees, what are they? And they're actually ginkgo tree, which turns yellow in December every year. And you get long boulevard avenues lined up with ginkgo tree and they all turn yellow at the same time. Like this, just beautiful. So many beautiful things about Japan, isn't it? Oh man, my heart, you know, just thinking I'm leaving soon and I won't be back here for a long time, so it's kind of like, ah, bittersweet, I guess. But I'm also excited to be going home, you know? So one thing that I wanted to touch on that I have not touched on at all in any of my YouTube videos here in Japan is how lonely I have kind of felt this whole trip. Now, for two reasons, I am married. Um, and I do everything, everything with my wife. And so for me to take this trip on my own and being alone in a foreign country like that for a long time without my wife had made me very, very lonely. But I also think that Tokyo has something to do with it because I feel like people in Tokyo, they're very, very kind and polite and everything, but they keep to themselves so much that they have some sort of a wall that they don't communicate verbally or just like a smile, you know, when you walk down the street and pass someone. Um, so I felt very, very disconnected and alone, even though Tokyo has around 40 million people living in it. It's, it's, it's very lonely here. And, um, and the main reason why is, is probably because I'm so used to being with my wife and doing everything and sharing everything with her that I can't enjoy myself as much being alone and doing everything that I'm doing without sharing that with her. I'm sharing it with you and I'm filming everything on my camera to, ca to capture it and share it, but it's different than it is to do something with, with your special someone. And I know it's kind of selfish to talk about this because like a lot of people are not married and they do live alone and, and there's a way to be happy and, and on your own and content I'm just not used to that and uh, yeah I've, I've really felt lonely lately so I'm kind of excited to go home in a way because I really want to get my life back with my my wife and my cat and my house and especially now that the end of the year is the winter time like you know it's the time you want to be home and cozy so I didn't want to dish on the Japanese people that I, I really love Japanese people it's just there is definitely 
when you're when you're coming from the west there's a, a, a difference in social interactions you know uh with people and um and maybe it's also the fact that i don't speak japanese and obviously they might be worried of talking with me because they're worried they're not going to be able to communicate and things are going to get lost, lost in translation and then and then maybe that closes them off even more so i don't know i don't know what it is but anyways enough of that let's stay on the positive note It looks like I'm going up and down some hills, which is a sign that I am getting to Kagorozaka because from memory, yeah, that little area of Tokyo was very hilly and, and very cute. And also, for those of you who don't know, Kagorozaka is known as the Little Paris or the French Quarters, if you will, because there's some paved streets that kind of look like Paris and some French restaurants. And also, I guess they have some geisha bars and stuff like that at night for entertainment so it's a very nice and little quaint neighborhood currently walking down the main street in Kagorozaka, which is like the main shopping street. And then you have a few side streets with a bunch of restaurants, a couple temples to visit as well. The one I just went to was a shrine. Uh, they were having some sort of a ceremony with people getting married and stuff, so it was pretty cool. But I didn't want to film that, obviously. And then uh, now I'm going to Family Mart because I need to get some cash out because the coffee shop that I want to go to is cash only. Yeah, that's another thing. Japan is a cash-based society, so there's a lot of places where you can't pay any other way than with cash. Just note that. I did make it to the, the Frencher area of Kagorosaka, which is basically a few, a few streets that are like in a row and they're all paved and you have a bunch of French restaurants and creperies and stuff like that. But yeah, what a, a quiet little escape in the middle of Tokyo. This is pretty crazy that, that it's here, really. This was it. One thing crazy that happened to me today is that I lost the strap from my camera. About two hours later, I realized it's not on me anymore and I had to go back to every little spot that I've been to this morning to try to figure out where I dropped it. And it was exactly where I dropped it, at the temple, at the shrine, sorry, here in Kagorazaka. And um, someone had picked it up from the floor and put it on a sign and just left it there for me to find when I come back. So that was, that was kind of cool because for a while I was very scared that I had to buy another one. All right guys, this is it for me today in this video and this is it for me in Japan. This is, this is me saying sayonara to Japan for a long time probably. So it's a bittersweet video that I'm making. However, I had a great time and I was 
so blessed to spend so much time here in Japan and being able to explore the way I did and and share that with you guys and I hope you guys you know on the channel you you liked watching content of me in Japan and I'll be going back to France and going home to my wife and I'm very excited for that part um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video like always like if you did like this video and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one very soon all right cheers